Podcasting from somewhere in the San Francisco Bay Area, the birthplace of Bruce Lee, the iPhone, and the Bendy Straw. This is Ruel's Running Podcast, a podcast about running, health, family, play, and an NSNG lifestyle. And now, here's your host, Ruel. No was a dream, a million miles away, there was fire in... Amazon.com. You know, I won't be surprised. If more and more stuff that I shop for, buy, and get shipped to my home comes from Amazon, it's just a reality, right? And if this is your reality, go to ruelsrunning.com, click through to the Amazon banner to get to Amazon. Why am I asking you to do so? Well, it is a no-cost-to-you way, if you like listening to Ruel's Running Podcast, it is a way that you can help the show out without spending more than you've already spent while shopping at the good folks at Amazon.com. So help us out. Go to RulesRunning.com, click through to the Amazon.com site, and shop, connect, and enjoy. Hello, citizens. It's Ruel from Ruel's Running Podcast coming at you. Live in effect, on-demand audio, if that even makes sense. And it doesn't. But thanks for being here. I'm uh, I'm podcasting on the go, as usual. And uh, I'm excited to uh, get back on the mic. It seems like forever since I've done this. Have you caught last episode? I hope you have. It's uh, episode 137, where... Uh, I had the conversation with Anna Vachino, everybody. She is um, releasing her Eat Happy Cookbook very soon. In a way, it has. It's available on Amazon as of this recording and as of the conversation I had with Anna. It is available for pre-release. The ebook version is available. Kindle version is available on pre-order on Amazon and um, last I saw where it had been initially uh, going to be released on the 2nd of August it looks like Amazon had uh, had to shift that date to 8 and correct me if I'm wrong somebody 816 or something like that so if you pre-order it uh, you still we still will be waiting for it uh, at some point in August and uh, it's awesome now, um, this episode will actually be not 138, I think. It'll be maybe, eh, I think it'll be 139 or 139 or 140, something along those lines. I have uh, um, episodes to release uh, of other conversations with other great folks uh, of on uh, Rubles Running Podcast. And you know what I've been doing lately? Um, well, before I get into that, I want to say, if you are a new listener, welcome to the show. If you are a return listener, welcome back to the show. I'm so glad that everyone is here. Did you hear that? That was just a rumbling of some crazy mad vehicle, probably off to somewhere important to show off how loud its muffler is. Anyways, um, I'm stuck in traffic, y'all, and it's the best time to flip on a mic. I ordinarily would have this mobile recorder um, dangling um, under my chin, but I think uh, the angle of the, what are these things called, the uh, the inputs, um, when they're left dangling under my chin, it, it leaves me um, with not the greatest, greatest, greatest audio. So I'm, I'm, uh, I'm driving and I'm holding a mic like I'm a news guy or a television television game show host welcome to name that podcast i'm your host guy something or other first category for one thousand dollars it is a favorite podcast about no sugars no grains who has the answer Next category. 
what the hell am I saying? <laughs> As my best game show host voice, I do not have a career in uh, voice whatsoever. Um, so what? Uh, what do I wanted to say lately? Uh, talk about is what I've been up to lately, and um, it's kind of funny how I flip on the mic for the podcast, and I feel like I haven't been doing this for a while, but daily for the past 20 some odd days i've been recording video of my of of stuff right and um and uh and it's kind of like podcasting except i can just talk about whatever i want well ruel aren't you talking about whatever you want right now yeah that's true <laughs> so um it's an extension of uh yapping about stuff i don't know um, anyways, traffic is horrible, but I shall do my best to get in this lane. I'm legally trying to get into this lane because I'm not trying to cross over the solid line like everybody else is. This is horrible. Hear that? That's the sound of a rider truck, a big old rider truck driving around me because uh, I can't stand waiting for me to get out of the way with my luck there you go that's my luck I'm halfway into the lane I want to be but my rear end of my vehicle is still sort of blocking so I'm blocking two lanes I'm awesome just call me two lane rue I am hogging up the freeway there you go now I'm back to normal um so, lately I've been doing a, a vlog. Um, I'm calling it a vlog, but to be honest, I don't really know what a vlog is. But I'm having a whole lot of fun. Um, you know, I try to present things time to time that uh, can be helpful, I think. Things like cooking. <laughs> Spending in time in the kitchen, um, goofing off. Um you know, with some import, with something meaningful or something not, but also spending time, uh, you know, with the family and having a little bit of fun. It's just my excuse to mess around with uh, some of the video editing tools. And uh, you know, at the end of it all, I think what is is happening is I'm able to capture, you know moments in my life and my family's life uh, that I'm able to look back on in sort of this sequence and say, huh, look at that. That happened. Yeah. And uh, along the way, share it with folks who uh, choose to follow along. So that is there. That's uh, the vlog at youtube.com slash Ruel's Running. Check it out. And uh, anyways... You know, I'm, uh, and I keep talking about this in, uh, in, uh, on the vlog, that, uh, I'm in the middle of editing, uh, podcast episodes, and I am, and, uh, it's just taking, uh, you know, on top of everything that's going on, it's just, it's just been a slow process. Part of me just wants to not do any of the post-editing, just let stuff go, and, but it's not going to be the greatest listening experience, you know. It's already a, it's it's already a challenge to listen to, I'm sure. And and if you and if you agree, just raise your hand. <laughs> I I see you. So uh, yeah, I was working a little bit on uh, Lonnie Beecham, the Lonnie Beecham, the next Lonnie Beecham episode. And uh, you know, it's always a fun time lis- re-listening or listening to the conversation while I edit and uh, yeah can't wait to get that out I want to get that out next I have uh, the Vinny Tortorich episode and I have another sliver of uh, audio that I recorded with Vinny aside from uh, you know the first one um, that I need to uh, integrate into uh, an episode for folks who care I care so it shall be done. Um, and I also have another episode that I got to put out. So I'm talking about episode numbers, but everything may just um, shuffle. It's kind of like a 
check your phone if you want to undo the the last text uh, entered on the device. Kind of like that. <laughs> uh, yeah. So here I am. Um, what I wanted to, I was, what I was hoping to talk about. <clears throat> excuse me, as I clear my throat. What I wanted to talk about was um, having to do with uh, food, uh, with ki- type of food, um, a bunch of types of food, if that even is grammatically correct, which I'm often not. Um, I was um, listening to something, and uh, I was reading something, actually. I, yes, I know, it's hard to believe. I can read, and it had to do with... Uh, Continental breakfast. Anybody, anybody know what continental breakfast is? What it's about? Mm, my first encounter with continental breakfast had to do with uh, spending time doing uh, trips with my wife and the family, that type of stuff. Well, even before I had a family, before we had a family uh, of our own, we would, you know, rent a, a nice hotel uh, for a nice weekend or so. And the hotel would offer a continental breakfast. And then... It's funny. Uh, side note. I'm looking at the progress update on my uh, activity app for uh, my iOS devices. And it's showing me how much I've done certain uh, activities. Apparently, um, apparently, I am standing... <laughs> As I am on the freeway, the app thinks that I'm standing and I'm doing a, I'm, and I'm making progress. Great job, Activity app, for tracking my activity. Um, anyways, back to Continental Breakfast. Uh, then, uh, um, for for work, you know, company events, they would do these meetings time to time, quarterly, annually, whatever. Um, or um, Departments would have these these meetings and hold them over at a hotel. So you would you know you would attend, get there as early as you can in the morning, and they would have provided continental breakfast. And um, the funny thing is that the continental breakfast um, um, isn't anything I care for. <laughs> Um, because it's typ- it typically consists of like juice and pastry. Um, I think that's pretty much it. Um, at least you know I don't care for it these days. And then it, you know, I came across some information of what that was all about. Why is it called the Continental Breakfast? So I am uh, trying to gather that bit of information and. Uh, share a little bit of it to you in case you're, you've ever wondered what uh, what the heck is a continental breakfast and why it's called a continental breakfast. But I seem to be having a little trouble trying to bring up that information. Why are you doing this to me? You know what the great thing is about pod- podcasting on the go? It takes the worst part of uh, traffic and uh, makes it all right. Um, <laughs> so you guys should try it. Try it now, because I'm uh, trying to sort stuff out. <clears throat> Excuse me. So why are continental breakfasts called called that? And this is off of uh, a blog that I came across called uh, Today I Found Out. And so shall you. Today you will find out why continental breakfasts are called that. And um, here is a uh, here's a bit of it. Many hotels off- offer guests a free breakfast consisting of muffins, coffee, mm, coffee, 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 coffee. Oh, excuse me. Um, coffee. Cereal and milk, toast, juice, bagel, and some even scrambled eggs, and make your own waffles. Sounds great, right? Anyways, born in the Gilded Age, today's continental breakfast reflects the West's transition from a mostly agrarian, did I say that right? Agrarian culture to an industrial, and today, service society. Luckily, however, some of us 
have not forgotten our culinary past. So let's see. Uh, breakfast in the early 1800s is what this next section is uh, saying. Uh, come on, come on. Wow, this blog is sure is finicky. Huh? Who says finicky these days? <laughs> like, like the, like this thing is a cat waiting for food. It's finicky. Oh, I see what's going on. This thing has some wonky. That's another one. Who uses wonky that that much these days? <laughs> this thing has some weird tracking. All of this uh, stuff. It's probably like ads and stuff, and it can't figure out the browser. Oh, this is such a pain. How am I ever going to share this information to the uh, the masses if? Uh, this ad tracker thing is uh, forcing itself on uh, on you guys. You know what the next thing is? I gotta flip over to. Uh, I need to flip over to a different browser and uh, go into incognito mode, and uh, hopefully it'll uh, bypass all of that garbage. So, folks, when you have a blog or a website, uh, too much tracking and ads and all that junk, it's just, you know, it's just going to make the whole user experience um, suck nuts and uh, a-holes, right? And um, so, today I found out, dot com, um, um, hope you're listening. <laughs> This is really sucking. Breakfast in the early 1800s. In the first part of the 19th century, as many rural American families had greater wealth and access to a large variety of foods, a typical family breakfast would include a meat, eggs, fish, a bread, a cereal, fruit, and any of a variety of condiments, including butter, jam, and maple syrup. Common meats throughout the states included bacon, sausage, and ham. Cereal grains such as grits and oats were also popular, as were many different types of breads, including pancakes and biscuits. Bet you're all hungry now, huh? Um, to continue, a hefty intake of calories, these hearty breakfasts were a necessity for the hard-working American farm family of the first half of the 19th century. Okay, now we're on to what's called Birth of the Continental Breakfast. Over the latter part of the 19th and early quarter of the 20th centuries, the West, and in particular, America increasingly became urbanized. From 1870 to 1920, the population of American cities grew from 10 million to 54 million, and many of these people were a part of a growing middle class. While these shopkeepers, dentists, accountants, and merchants may have been may have put in long hours, they certainly weren't exerting the same physical energy as their agrarian forebears. Needing fewer calories, the traditional American heavy breakfast eventually fell out of fashion. Also, at this time, continental Europeans were traveling the world and bringing their taste preferences with them. This brings us to the British and the traditional British fry up alternatively known as the fry, or full English and even the full Monty. A traditional English breakfast has both <clears throat> sausage and bacon, eggs, fried bread, literally a slice of bread fried in either lard, butter, or bacon fat, sliced fresh tomato, and baked beans. Yes, like Heinz baked beans. In addition, many purveyors of this Matterhorn of breakfasts also offer optional pudding. Not jello, but rather a sausage made from oats and pork fat with or without pig's blood. Kidney, beef or lamb, kippers, smoked herring, 
sauteed mushrooms, and of course, fried potatoes. Applied by the heavy British breakfast, um, excuse me, appalled, appalled by the heavy, heavy British breakfast, the Europeans think the French and their petit déjeuner. God, did I said it right. Help the British create a modest first meal, frequently consisting merely of coffee or tea, pastry, and fruit. By 1855, this was being referred to as the Continental Breakfast. Europeans were also touring America and staying in their hotels. Frequently, the primary, if not only, source of meals for a tourist, American hotels soon began adjusting their fare to meet the tastes of and expectations of their European customers. The American middle class, some whom also toured Europe and were exposed to the practice over there as well, soon also preferred the smaller meal and thus the continental breakfast became an American staple. Next section, it's not just the food. The term continental referred to more than just the dishes served. It also described its pricing. Traditional American hotels were more like boarding houses where meals were included in the price of the room. On the other hand, European hotels offered rooms and meals a la carte. As Europeans toured America and Americans toured Europe, Soon, hotel patrons in the U.S. were opting out of most hotel meals. Although breakfast was still desired to accommodate these changing tastes, the continental model of room pricing, where breakfast was included with the cost of the room, came about. Next section, lamenting a loss. Not every member of the Gilded Age was pleased with the new fad, as one sad and hungry person noted in the Harper's Weekly in 1896. Um, in old days, a hungry man could get more things to eat. Hungry men have declined in numbers and influence. No one but the autocrat ever talked about much. About talked ever talked much about. Blech. No one but the autocrat ever talked much at the old style breakfast, for the viands were too tempting. Great beefsteaks, hot rolls, buckwheat cakes, oat omelets, potatoes, coffee, and even pie. If you like this article, you might also enjoy subscribing. Blah 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 blah. Okay, now the article just kind of went. Um, but. I thought it was interesting. Oh, right, here we go. Um, let's see. The recommended articles. So, here's a bonus breakfast. Bonus big breakfast today. Of course, the big breakfast never really went out of style. Depending on your locale, you can still pack in a full day's worth of eating before 10 a.m., for instance. Atlanta's heap. Served in the skillet of which the potatoes were fried, the heap piles on two kinds of cheese green pepper, onion, two eggs, bacon and toast, the hot sauce is served on the side. How about the Iowa breakfast? Raising over 25% of all pork in the U.S., it should come as no surprise that Hawkeyes enjoys a tasty breaded and deep fried pork tenderloin first thing in the morning, especially if it's served with gravy, a couple of eggs, home fries, and a side of mini pancakes. How about the St. Louis Slinger? Rarely seen outside the confines of Saint, South St. Louis or Louis, the Slinger was born in the wee hours of the morning in one of the city's greasy spoons. Sure to soak up whatever you've been drinking, the Slinger smothers two eggs, a hamburger patty, a hash brown in chili and cheese, often served with a side of toast, biscuit, or even pancakes. Tuscaloosa Classic Ham steak, grits, a couple of eggs, buttery biscuits, coffee, orange juice, and red-eye gravy are common staples of this great southern breakfast. Yeah. 
That was a whole lot of breakfast going down. Uh, that's that's done. Um, I don't know. I thought I wanted to... <clears throat> I, the whole continental breakfast just sounded to me. So I'm done, with, obviously, with that, that little reading. But um, <laughs> the, uh, the whole continental breakfast, to me, was just like a pastry, a coffee, and a juice. And then done with it. And it was it's just not appealing to me anymore. Um... So, you know, hearing about or reading about how breakfasts used to be and how they can be configured and labeled uh, depending on uh, where it's coming from, it can be really, really interesting and really, really abundant and pretty gnarly. Um, So, yeah, I hope you enjoyed that. hope that was informative. I hope that was made you think about this thing called continental breakfast. The next time you check into a hotel... And uh, you you, uh, you you order your room rather, and uh, you check into a hotel, and then the uh, the desk t- the desk uh, clerk tells you that oh uh, yeah we serve a free continental breakfast. It sounds so fancy and bigger than it is, but yeah. it, you know when you're living a no sugar no grains lifestyle, you know you look. You, you you can you quickly look at a whole spread of a continental breakfast and you automatically scratch out an item because it is not what you want to eat. Orange juice gone. Why? That's just a glass of sugar. Pure sugar. Pastries gone. Why? Because it's processed grain and sugary. Right and can have sugar. Bagels gone. Why? Well, it's processed grain, right? Um, Packaged cereals, gone. Why? Because it's processed grains and sugar, right? Coffee, in my cup and in my belly. (laughs) As long as it doesn't have any sweetener and and a garbage uh, uh, cream uh, substitute, right? It's coffee. You know, and for the places that serve eggs, as long as the eggs are made from fresh eggs, they're awesome. If you don't know if they're made with fresh eggs, then they be suspicious that they may be using some sort of egg batter, pre-mixed, pre-packaged egg batter that may contain um, flour in it. Because places like uh, these diners here, like uh, IHOP, for instance, it's not a surprise. You can you can Google this and you can find out that IHOP, with their omelet batter, it's not all eggs. They put like a pancake batter in there or some sort of flour to make the omelets fluffier. So, you know, if this if there's a place that's offering a continental breakfast with an egg option, look out. As an NSNG lifestyler, not gonna not gonna eat the eggs if I if I can get confirmation and you know uh, pretty well that they're made out of fresh eggs um what else gosh w- waffles you know you know it's there's there's some of these hotels where they have on a little refrigerator uh, what do you call it an ice tray these little pitchers of uh, waffle mix and they've got for you to use a uh, waffle iron so you can what you can create your own freshly made waffles but waffles scratched from them scratched from my menu my diet why because it's processed grains and sugar and whenever you do it if it's pancakes same thing and oftentimes they're having a variety of syrups which are a no-no why because high fructose corn syrup any sort of sweetener, any type of sugar, garbage, right? You don't need it. So, um, what else? Bacon, right? Some places they'll 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 offer bacon. Great. Um, I found the places that offer bacon and the, where the continental breakfast is part of the whole deal. The bacon isn't the greatest bacon. It's not the hardiest bacon. It's kind of like uh, I don't know if there's such a thing. Empty bacon. <laughs> I think it's really turkey bacon, which is not the same, right? Because it's missing that wonderful, healthy fat that comes from real 
pork, real bacon. So, yeah. Um, so what do, what do I do? With, what do I do is uh, I'll go for the coffee. If I if I if I can know for certain that the egg is uh, from fresh eggs, I'll have it. Sometimes places will have a hard, would have hard boiled eggs you can get into, so I'll grab hard boiled eggs. If there's the bacon, I'll may have a couple strips, even if it's a turkey bacon. Um, and uh, for sure, what I'll do is if it looks like they have decent butter, I'll throw in the butter. And if they have little individual packets of uh, Philly cream cheese, I'm grabbing several tubs of the cream cheese. So I've got the cream cheese working for me. I'd have the, a couple strips of bacon working for me. I'll have the butter working for me as far as from a fat perspective because that's primarily where I want to get my energy on none of this processed carb and sugary junk. So that's how sort of if you're on this this sort of lifestyle, this NSNG lifestyle, no sugar, no grains, that's how I kind of walk into a whole continental breakfast spread at a hotel. A lot of stuff just kind of gets ignored and not even considered. They're not even tempting, you know, like croissants and bear claws and donuts and that stuff isn't food, man. You know, and then the, the individually packaged uh, very variety of uh, cereals, the Fruit Loops and the Corn Flakes and the Raisin Bran. And and you know, there's the standard toast, you know, and they've got a variety of jellies and jams. And goodness gracious, all of the processed carbs and sugars, all in all the junk. Why, why, why? You know, there's nothing for me. But... One thing for sure is there's got to be coffee, <laughs> you know, decent coffee, and I can just get as much as I want in a to-go cup and uh, rock and roll. If I can get coffee and any sort of healthy fat, I mean, you know, uh, fat like a, from a decent butter and a de- decent cream cheese, um, I can operate, I can operate uh, most of the day just on that. Not say that I'm constantly eating butter and cheese, but if 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 I were to get take anything in the morning, I'll have coffee, and I'll just have a little bit of that cheese or that butter, and uh, trickle coffee uh, throughout the day. Um, that I'll I won't be hungry. I won't I won't worry about it. So that's sort of how this whole continental breakfast thing evolved, uh, at least in this episode of this podcast. Yeah, so I want to. <laughs> end that there and kind of move on to other things that uh, also aren't as important (laughs) coming up Rue gives us something else to think about how vague is that Ruel geez could you be any vaguer Ruel well it's all coming up on Ruel's running Okay, the book is called Eat Happy, Gluten-Free, Grain-Free, Low-Carb Recipes for a Joyful Life by me, Anna Vicino. Eat Happy has 154 delicious grain-free, gluten-free recipes that are also free of any processed sugars. There are meats, fish, sides, soup, starters, casseroles, slow cooker recipes, breakfast dishes, and even desserts to satisfy any sweets craving you might have, all with virtually no sugar. If you are low-carb, paleo, are wanting to keep autoimmune issues at bay, or just want to lose extra weight, Eat Happy gives you comfort food where you won't miss the sugars or grains so your body and brain can feel happy from eating real food. The ebook is available for purchase. And, you know, I'm finding out that a lot of people like uh, cookbooks on an ebook. Okay, go get it then. Now's your chance. Yay! Yay! Um. Here's the thing that I've always been meaning to bring up on the podcast because I um, um, would like to put it out there and I may offend folks and uh, and uh, I apologize if I do 
if what I start to talk about includes you. But it's important to me to bring up, and it probably is important for others to bring up too, but they just have been too scared to bring it up. And it is um, about nose picking. You know, you stick that finger up the nose, the top of the nose picking. So, this one day, I'm sitting at a lobby. <clears throat> My son has an appointment somewhere. And I'm sitting in the, I guess, the waiting area. And uh, there's a, a girl. I don't know. Maybe she's a uh, preteen. I don't know. Maybe. Um, but she's a, she's a grown kid. She's on her smartphone. And uh, her legs were crossed, staring at her smartphone, and uh, she was picking her nose. Yeah, she was picking her nose. She was kind of like two, three chairs off to the side of me. So I, every now and then, I kind of I have this tendency, as you've seen in the vlogs, I have this tendency to look around a lot and talk because so for some reason, moving my head helps my brain work. <laughs> so I'm, every now and then, I kind of turn over and I see she's <clears throat> picking that nose. Okay. At first, it's kind of like she's not picking her nose because at one moment, it looks like she's just nibbling on her fingernail. You know how some people, they just kind of like to bite on their fingernails. Um, so then, oh, she's just kind of nibbling on her fingernail. Okay. Look again. Oh, that same finger is in her nose. Oh, interesting. Okay. Look again. Oh, it's still in her nose. Okay. Look again. Oh, look. It just went from her nose to her mouth. Oh, she's eating her boogers. <laughs> she's eating her snot. I know, you guys are disgusted. You're ready to flip off. And I don't blame you if you want to change the episode. <clears throat> There's many more episodes you can talk about if this chat is, is, not, is not doing it for you. But I'm going to be talking about nose picking anyways. So my thing is... Um, let's see. I'm trying to understand why folks pick their nose and eat their, what they pick out of their nose. From what I've heard, because I don't from what I've heard is um, from um, um, uh, purveyors of this uh, type of cuisine. I don't know if that even a th if, that's a, if that's even used correctly. Uh, the <laughs> that it, there's a sweetness to eating burgers. <clears throat> First of all, if I want something sweet, it's not going to come out of my nose. You know, and if I need something sweet, and really bad I'm not going to find it in my nose uh, secondly is I'm not interested in things that are sweet so I'm not going to bother pulling that out of my nose and eating it um, so I get it when you're a toddler perhaps or a baby and oh look little so and so just picked his or her nose and made the burger. Oh, that's disgusting. But it's so cute. You know, I could see that happening. But then you're like preteen. You're a young teen. You're an adult. Because yes, I know. I've seen adults pick their nose and eat their burgers. Shame on you guys. Sorry. You know. But it's disgusting. <laughs> I mean... Yeah, I, I guess that's all I have to say about that. It's, I mean, burgers are what? It's like your bodily oils in your nose and, and dust that you somehow inhale. It all kind of accumulates and forms to become burgers. So then you decide to eat it and somehow it tastes sweet to you. I mean, it, yeah. Man, this was some serious nose picking this girl was doing. It was like... You could see like her finger come out of her nose and there's like this little band of like mucus kind of like kind of like you know like the mozzarella cheese when you kind of pull a pizza slice off of a pie of pizza and it kind of string cheese kind of kind of oozes and stretches out it's kind of like that and it made her way into her and like she just kept on doing it and staring at her phone and kept on doing it and nowhere was it like any concern that someone might be seeing me someone might be seeing me um gross uh yeah so um i'll have to do more research on nose picking and booger eating and uh, get back to you hopefully someone will have a blog post out there that i can share <laughs> all right moving right along um 
observation has to do with food, has to do with family, has to do with health, I feel, has to do with kids and sodas, right? I don't know why in this day and age it surprises me when I see uh, kids with a whole can of soda, pop, soft drink, cola, um, non-cola, either way, carbonated, soft drink, sugary, nonsense, right? At least in this day and age, right? I, <clears throat> so I'm at a Filipino restaurant and I'm, I see a family with kids who are basically me when I was a kid, right? I'm a Filipino, albeit Guam born and raised, so I'm, I'm a proud uh, Guamanian. Um, you know, I see these, these, these boys, you know, sitting down to have their meal with their family. I love it that f- people can still sit down with their families and have meals. And uh, everyone's r- raring to go, getting their, getting their place at the table and getting, you know, their utensils and whatever. And the kids are like, they're all holding on to their cans of, I don't know what it was, if it was a Pepsi or a Coca-Cola. And it bothers me, right? Because that was me. That was me, and there was nothing wrong with it for me when I was a kid. But now, in this day and age, I know better. We should know better. There's just so much information about why a can of soda is not a good thing for anybody, right? Especially kids, you know. You'll find it all over the place, Sort of any sort of, sort of comparison or illustration of how much sugar is in your standard Coca-Cola or Pepsi-Cola type deal. It's, it's uh, tons of, uh, no, you know, this is a, a crap load of processed sugar. Yeah, so that bothered me. And, uh, you know, you know, it, 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 <clears throat> and it, you realize how the parents may not know, you know, what a chunk of us, but not the majority apparently, know about how harmful it is. It can be a treat, you know. It may have been these guys don't ordinarily have it, and this is the one time in a year that they're going to have a soda. You know, I don't know. You know. <clears throat> But um, it, it it reminds me of another time I was at a kids party for uh, for a friend, um, and I remember the first time we we ha- had attended one of their parties was was at uh, a house their house, and there was a kid who seemed he seemed out of out of it out of it and he seemed like exhausted. And kind of whiny and kind of um, um, in bad shape. And this kid was, you know, like how I was when I was a kid. I was chunky. It was a chunky kid. So I was kind of wondering why he's kind of like out of it, kind of upset. So we'll just say he was upset. You know, like he was about to, on the verge of crying. And uh, so that was really... That that really didn't stand out because kids are kids and kids will be weird all in various times and moments. But I guess what what call brought his atten- what caught my attention was that his mom went over to him and said, "Here, drink this." Cracked open a can of soda and ha- let him drink half of it and told him to basically like calm down and just drink this. And it was clear that he was going through something and that was her parental style of getting him to settle down. And again, knowing how much sugar is in your standard soda, I'm like, man, she is just letting him pound down that sugar as her way of coping with whatever he's dealing with. So that, you know, that party ended... You know, a year or two goes by, maybe three, and I forget about it. 
and then I attend a party for the same family somewhere else, not at the home. And um, I see this kid, something familiar about the kid, something familiar about the mom. Couldn't remember because it had been years. And then I saw the mom give the kid a soda. It was one of those half-sized cans of soda, but it was a soda. And then it, remi- it, it, it jarred my memory. I'm like, oh. And it was, uh, it was like, you know, and that's, that's, that's the same <clears throat> mother and son. And, uh, and there they are with the sodas again, you know. The kid is a smart kid because I remember the kid was was talking about stuff. Um, it was sort of a uh, entertaining in, in, um, and educational sort of party. <clears throat> Our friends had a party at a, uh, I guess like a SPCA, like an animal shelter facility. I didn't know that places like that make their spaces available for parties, but it was sort of this thing where. You know, you have a kid party, the kids get to tour the facility and see the various animals, and depending on whether or not the animal is up for it, or if they have the animals that are available, the kids get to, you know, pet or even uh, offer a treat to some of the anim- uh, some of the, the animals. You know, they're, they're, um, the kids are taught, you know, proper ways to sort of ask permission by dog owners if they may pet their dog, you know. And um, so you, the kids get to do that, and then, you know, there's the space where the parties are held, and someone from the organization um, does some entertainment based around animals and animals they care for. So it's it's a neat experience and I remember this one kid the uh, the soda drinking kid he's just very very bright and smart and spoken spoke really well <clears throat> so you know my best wishes to him and he's a smart kid and and um you know I think that there is something wrong that can happen down the road if um like me he continues down the path of drinking those sodas because just sodas alone can wreak major damage to a person huh yeah so it's kind of sad kind of sad but uh, there's hope I mean you know this is this podcast <clears throat> you know Ruel's running podcast and I've talked about it in the past it's a place not just about running one foot in front of the other you know by sport or by just exercise or activity but also it's a place of running things that are important to your life or in your life and uh things that are for me as the host uh something that things that are important to me that i'm excited about and it's me being sort of a health enthusiast i am not a nutritionist i am not a uh, a uh, certified fitness coach i am not a you know any one of those guys i'm just this guy who has a uh a, an IT background, if you will, and who <clears throat> has uh, ha- who is enthusiastic about uh, who my my type of running, um, the types of foods that I eat and that excite me, the uh, the type of uh, lifestyle that I live, and I know that there are lots more who have, in their own way, similar excitements and interests. And rather than me trying to attempt to be an expert, I just sort of present what I have, uh, be an example, share as an example. I'm not saying that I'm a perfect example. I'm just saying that, hey, this is what I did. Huh? Does anybody, if anybody's interested. Um, and, you know, there are folks that are interested. So for folks who continue to listen and uh um, get a little bit of something out of the, uh, out of this, you know. Thanks for being there. Thanks for listening. You know, and I do encourage folks, and folks do. They'll chime in. They'll uh, drop a message on Speakpipe. They'll drop an email. They'll drop comments in the in the on the website. You know, they'll tweet at me. They'll they'll uh, comment on the Facebook page. So, um, you can do the same. <clears throat> you want to share? You know, we can. Let's share. Uh, what excites you? You know, what about anything about you, things that you do? 
you know, it related to health, the foods you eat, the activities you do, you know. You know, I've come from a place where I've spent <clears throat> a number of years um, training and practicing martial arts. That stuff excites me. I don't get to talk about it a lot. I don't actively uh, do any training and study, um, but that's still a, a important part of who I am, and when I get the opportunity to either watch, observe, and... Uh, and uh, participate, you know, it really, really excites me, you know. Um, not sure as far as running when my next uh, deal would be, but, uh, you know, that's something that I still continue to do. Uh, I spend time in the middle of the days, you know, running as much as I can. And I'm looking for the next uh, long run to do, planning that out. Um, I don't know if it'll happen this year. We'll see. Um, you know, and there's always that uh, an SNG uh, lifestyle, that angle of how I choose to sort of base how, how I uh, f- um, nourish myself and ha- share that example, you know, because when I started on it, it really excited me to find out how others were going uh, going about uh, approaching the lifestyle, you know, going about uh, getting healthier, whether it's losing weight or just being healthier or finding a better better way to sort of fuel themselves for their activities uh, without sugars, without grains, without processed carbs, without, you know, with healthy fats, with healthy fats. And um, and obviously family and play are, playing, play and family are gr- great interest to me because I operate in a family, part of a family, I've got kids, and, uh, you know, that play aspect and the family, just a great way to stay active and to actually feel, I'd like to think, uh, younger than I actually am. Um, yeah, so that is sort of the uh, the realm of this thing, this podcast, um, so I hope it pre- prevents... Prevents. I provide some value or some entertainment. I don't know. Yeah. <clears throat> I am sitting uh, at a stop watching a guy who I can um, guess. Uh, he's a street dweller. I can maybe describe him that way. And uh, he stopped on the sidewalk and had his eyes closed and his face facing the sun and uh, not judging him in any negative way but sort of getting ah oh, that feels so good just stop take a moment figure out where the sun is at face that direction close your eyes and just take in that warmth take in the rays that's Awesome. Yeah, now I'm on, I'm on the go. It's kind of the reason why I, I like to. That's when I can run with as l- little amount of stuff on my skin, so that I can just feel that contact of the sun and the wind <clears throat> on me. I don't know. It kind of feels cool, you know. Most of the time, we're all covered up. You know, where I used to live, I always had a coat on, which was horrible. How can you live your life constantly wearing coats? Got to like let it let it peel it off and enjoy feeling the environment, not a garment. <laughs> All right, let's see where were we at? Oh my gosh, this has been rambling on and on. Um I uh, I, uh, uh so easy to do, isn't it? Everyone should start a podcast because it's just a great way to sort of uh, get more uh, stuff out there. Uh, I'll listen, just like you guys are listening. Um, yeah, where am I on to now? I am on to. I am heading home. I had spoken to my wife uh, before I hit the road to coordinate where each of us currently are and where we expect to be. Um, so we can all meet up. I spent uh, a bit more time on at, at the office than I needed to 
that I that I want to, um, meaning I wanted to leave earlier to beat the traffic, but had some important meetings to hit and take care of. So it's just what it is. Now uh, I get to uh, head home or to a park or maybe home and then to a park. <clears throat> yeah, awesome. You guys, by the time this releases, the the vlog of the day would have been put out. And you guys don't want to miss it because I am going to show you what homemade Play-Doh looks like after... Um, I'm going to show you in the video what homemade Play-Doh looks like when it is made with... Uh, Instead of vegetable oil, because we don't keep that stuff around the house, uh, with a little bit of olive oil, yummy. But again, this is homemade Play-Doh. It's not meant for consuming. It's meant for entertainment for the kids. I didn't make it. My kids made it with the help of a grown-up who wasn't me. And uh, I show you in the video what it looks like after it's been sitting in Ziploc bags um, on the kitchen counter for a few days when it's been pretty warm lately. So uh, I show you that. I basically show you it in the garbage bin because it was just disgusting. I tell you, I got up in the morning and I was making breakfast and I walked by the side of the counter where these Ziploc bags of homemade Play-Doh were and it looked like the Play-Doh had sort of just turned into slime. And uh, there were pockets of bubbles everywhere in the Play-Doh and uh, so I kind of like poked at the bag. <laughs> I don't know why. It was like a very subtle poke. It must be instinct at poking stuff that looks slimy. <laughs> I poked at it. And again, it was, it was mostly like a touch. Just enough to make the baggie kind of get pressed on slightly. But it was enough to cause movement around the bags and the air around the bags and uh, it was the stench of puke and vomit and vomit and puke was coming out seeping out of the bags and I realized quickly that this stuff needed to be put in the garbage bin outside because it is disgusting and uh, picked it up threw it in the garbage and then I uh, went back into the kitchen, got some Lysol wipes, and I wiped the counter for a long time. Why? Not because I am uh, uh, anal about being clean, but because Lonnie Beecham will tell you. Lonnie is our, in, our professional indoor environmentalist. He operates uh, Restore Restoration at Jefferson City, Missouri, and the surrounding areas. How's that, plug, Lonnie? Um, he tells, he told me that those wipes supposedly are, kill like viruses and bacteria and whatnot, right? As it's labeled, but only if you contact the surface long enough, right? And with uh, with uh, the solution. But most of the times, folks will just take those Lysol wipes and just kind of smear across the surface and be done with it. And you know, the stuff evaporates, so there isn't enough of the solution to make long enough contact to kill whatever you think you're killing or cleaning out. So I had the, the wipes all wet and just kind of constantly just kind of just smearing all over the thing and just trying to make sure enough of that solution was keeping contact. I don't remember how long I did it, but I figured as long as I wasn't just kind of swiping through a couple times and leaving it alone, uh, if, if I was doing longer than that, that I'd be better off. So Lonnie, you would have been proud of me <laughs> as I tried to ensure that there wasn't any puke smelling homemade Play-Doh matter on the kitchen counter left because man, I can't remember the last time something stunk that bad. Uh, Puke-wise, I mean, most of the puke that I get to see doesn't smell that wretched. You know, kids puke, ah, it's like this milk, huh? You know, oh look, 
It's a pasta. Yeah, my cut. My kids still eat pasta time to time. Not all the time. Yeah. Oh look, it's rice. Yeah, my kids will eat rice more often than pasta. Um, but <laughs> oh, or my daughter. Um, oh, there's blueberries. That's that's always the pain in the butt because you know blueberries will stain. So it's like oh look, blueberries. She she uh she uh st she she stuck her finger down her throat long enough because she likes to suck on her finger off her fingers when she's sleeping she must have stuck it down too deep and it made her gag and she barfed out the last thing she ate and she snacked on what i was snacking on that particular night god this is just a disgusting episode of stuff but yeah cream and blueberries and yogurt so she's bleh there you go there's the yogurt and the blueberries all in her bed sheets lovely 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 Awesome. Well, I believe that's a show, don't you think? <laughs> you guys are going to walk away from this episode thinking, I am much better than I was before this episode. Because I heard Ruel talk about the most disgusting things. And uh, he talked about the Continental Breakfast. <laughs> that's it, guys. Um, stay tuned. I'm sure I have a great conversation episode uh with uh with uh with a guest uh following this i don't know in which order things will be re uh, released but um i did want to spend the time to actually sit and do an episode because uh, i've been working so much on um they're not interview episodes they're not really interview episodes they're more just like uh special guest episodes uh, and uh yeah a lot of time between uh the last uh, solo episode and <clears throat> and now so yeah uh, thanks for listening and uh, remember folks if uh, when you get a chance you gotta hug that family member you gotta high five that friend hey, maybe even give him a hug and despite all of the disgusting things I talked about get something delicious and enjoy it and go out and run whatever it is in other words run something bye thanks for listening to ruel's running podcast with ruel if you like what you just heard share it with your friends and your enemies also be sure to check out the site over at ruelsrunning.com this has been another coffee with heavy cream production join us next time for another silly show of ruel's running podcast